What's up guys, it's Buster Dingo here and we're back with Hot Wheels on Forza Horizon 5. Now we haven't got back around to this for quite a while now, so um, forgive me if I'm a little slow on the uptake. Let's get to business. So we start off here with the beginning, the origins of Hot Wheels, and then these are the rest, which we'll get to later. Let's do this. So, where's our special guest? The Hot Wheels expert. <laughs> Haven't figured it out yet, have you? Get in! Yeah, so this is the car we're driving. A Hot Wheels Camaro. Nice. a toy car that looked cool and rolled fast, making it that much more fun to play with. At the time, there was nothing out there like that. Handler brought in former rocket engineer Jack Ryan and General Motors car designer Harry Bradley for help, and between them they made the first 16 cars, known as the original 16. Jack's team developed the stainless steel axles and Delrin hubs that allowed the cars to roll super fast, while Harry made them look super eye-catching. Harry and Jack's contributions became the pillars of Hot Wheels, performance and design. The first car off the production line was a custom Camaro, but not like the one you're driving right now. You see what you did there? Yeah! And another of the original 16 was the custom Fleetside, based on Harry's custom Chevy El Camino. Most of those early designs were inspired by hot rods and muscle cars, which were popular in California car culture at the time. After Harry Bradley, more designers joined the team, like Ira Guildford from Chrysler, who did the twin mill, and Larry Wood from Ford, who designed the original Bone Shaker. But right from the beginning, they were designing cars to do one thing above all, roll really, really fast on plastic tracks. You've done your research. Research? I memorized this stuff when I was six years old. One reason why Hot Wheels are so eye-catching is because of a special paint called Spectra Flame. They used a transparent lacquer applied over a polished zinc plating, which gave it a totally awesome metallic effect, just like a real car. Since then, Hot Wheels has broadened and developed its paint technique to support a variety of looks and effects. Fascinating stuff, right? Another detail was a red stripe on the tyres, like the one you're driving now. They called them red line tyres, and they look so cool! Red line tyres are a defining characteristic of this era, and are really sought after by collectors. Yeah, it depends on the lecture, but I really want to commentate. And it can't be done if you're just going to talk over me. Nice drive. Here, take the Nash Custom 1957. Winner of the Legends Tour 2019. Thanks, Hayley. Hey, let's do this again soon. I have a just 3.3 of a second off. Uh, not to worry, I'll uh, get to redo it another time. Meanwhile. Right now we got the iconic orange track. Just why is it orange anyway? Good question, you ask. But one I cannot answer as of now. Still, not to worry. Come on, let's take this monster Ooh, for a here. spin. I wonder how much power this is uh, ripping out. Careful! Technically, that's more than 1400 brake horsepower you've got there. 
that's a lot. As I said, Hot Wheels have always been designed to go really fast on custom tracks. So, what do you do with the track? Well, you make it in segments so people can build whatever they like. Then you invent a battery-powered booster to shoot oh. fast along the straight and a speed brake to slow them down for tight turns. You can even tune how fast the booster will propel the cars. But, why stop there? Loops, jump rack, bank turns, gravity drops, trestle bridges, chicanes, crossovers, lap counters, multi-lane, side-by-side racing launchers. All fully compatible, of course. That's just good engineering. They even made an auto shop with a working dyno and a teeny tiny oil can and wrench to tune up your cars. I paid with it. It was. Nice. So why's the track orange? It's like bright orange. <laughs> Can't argue with that. That's it. Seems like bright orange. And That's you know, all you can come Nothing on. is more exciting than seeing cars racing side by side. Hot Wheels made loads of accessories for this, including launches for the start line, pedometers to clock the speed of passing cars, and finish gantries that can show which car had won. No cheating allowed! In the 70s, there were dedicated cross-lane track pieces, including the Fat Track, which was three lanes wide and had no dividers for a risky overtake. there's even more fun stuff to play with. You've got figure eight, multi-story garages, rubber band kickers, and even... Burn giant sharks and dinosaurs that jump on the track. Why else do you think we got a giant dragon right here at the park? Dinosaurs, sharks, and dragons. Fascinating. So, why make your cars go really fast on plastic track? I give up. Why? So they go further when they jump off the end, of course. <laughs> Come on, let's go. This is going to be epic. <laughs> I'm riding along with you for this bit. Please don't send me the bell. <laughs> three stars of three st jumps 360. Need a bit more speed. Still, it is what it is. Mm, by the way, you don't have to pay for fast travel here at the park. The Hot Wheels people know how to carry cars around. Now, the snake and the mongoose. Make your choice and learn about Hot Wheels, innovative for the 70s. Okay. <laughs> You're probably wondering what all this snake and mongoose talk is about, right? You take the yellow car, I'll take the blue. I'll explain along the way. You've heard of Don Prudom and Tom McEwen, right? They were famous NHRA drag racers in the 70s, who had a friendly rivalry going on for years. Uh... Don was a four-time National Hot Rod Association champ and a motorsport Hall of Famer. He was nicknamed The Snake. And Tom McEwen was another dragster who won the NHRA US Nationals. They called him The Mongoose. They were both well-established racers in their own right. As the two of them competed in the US Nationals over the years, they crossed paths numerous times which sparked a friendly rivalry between them. Mattel proposed to make a... ...series of toys based on the rivalry between the snake and the mongoose. The Hot Wheels sponsorship led to all kinds of drag-themed stuff. This is the very first! Handle. 
It's always power. Hot Wheels came out with all kinds of new lines back then. You had sets like the Rod Runner and the Big Belter, which launched cars with rubber bands. The Big Belter could even detect jump starts, which is pretty cool, right? These were a smash hit and propelled both Hot Wheels and drag racing to greater levels of fame. Heavyweights were designed to go faster on gravity drops and Sizzlers had little battery powered motors so you didn't need a launcher. Fascinating. Ooh. And a new designer named Paul Cam started drawing six door designs like six shooter and open fire. This car has so much torque you probably do play speed in this car in full gear and it still wheels you. Hot Wheels didn't stop there. There were loads of other innovations like tampo printed patterns on the cars which no one else was doing. Then you had the Hot Wheels Collector's Club Kit where you could mail in to get either the Boss Puff Heavy Chevy or King Cuda, all with open hoods, big supercharger blowers and silver paint jobs. Oh, so cool. Wish I'd been around back then. You know what? All this talk about drag racing has given me an idea. You want me, please. You want to go on a drag? The cars in the original Snake vs. Mongoose set were powered by rubber bands. These ones, well, on. How about you and I test them in a drag race? Bring yeah. it on, Haley. Let's go. Yeah, well, I knew they'd do it. Time to see if that snake has a bite. A second, this isn't a drag race. A drag race is two cars in a straight line, same position on the start line. I really got to try and keep up. Up on the loop. Keep your car in the middle. Upside down racing is the best kind of racing. Keep telling yourself that, darling. <laughs> Obviously let you win though. Who <laughs> else am I gonna give the keys to the rip rod? You did not let me win, I'll beat you on merit. Suck it up. So this one, treasure hunting. Haley regales about Hot Wheels during the 80s and 90s. Okay. You'll be doing all the driving for this one. Here, take the keys and I'll be on the radio. Oh, that would be easy, I'll fly. Fair warning, I've got loads to tell you, but I promise it'll be worth it. Right, so the 80s were known as the Blackwood era because the previous red line tires were the red was discontinued in 1977. Then there were hot ones with dinner axles, ultra hot, the new wheel design, real riders with actual rubber tyres, those are pretty popular. Let me think, we've got crack ups with damage panels, colour shifters that change in water, oh and you know the blue car blister packs you can recognise from across the store, they started in the 80s too. I 
good maintaining over 100 miles per hour. So and if you keep your blue cards, you can mail them in and redeem them for bonus cards. Didn't know that. Cool, well, now you know that. Toys in 97, makers of the Matchbox brand of toy cars. This brought all the miniature toy cars under one big roof. for this one. Off-road series 2014 code BD00. One of the new lines Hot Wheels created was called the Treasure Hunt series. Limited production, super collectible. Obviously we can't go into a toy store or convention floor, so I'll simulate the experience with some treasure chests. Oh! Go find that treasure! Collect them all! Need it? catch them all.
Hey, now you know what it's like to be a proper Hot Wheels collector. Exhausting, right? Yeah. Worth it, though. Yeah, Hot Wheels today. Let's see how we do. I've always had a soft spot for the bone shaker. It's like an antique you can drive around in. Let's go. Oh, oh, did I tell you about the Hot Wheels 50th anniversary back in 2018? No, no but I have a feeling you're about to. They did a sweet black and gold series with matching livery and a whole collection of other 50th anniversary inspired cars throughout the line. They also started the Hot Wheels Legends Tour. Custom car builders compete to show off their best designs. Then Hot Wheels picks the best one and makes it into a 1 to 64 scale toy. That's how we ended up with the two JFC, Nash Metropolitan and Custom Trans Am. Sometimes the opposite happens, where a toy car gets scaled up into a real one. Hot Wheels have made more than 20 full-scale cars and used them to break three world records with actual corkscrew jumps and double loops. <laughs> it's wild. loads of amazing designers had worked on Hot Wheels. Mark Jones, Phil Wheelman, Brendan Petuski, Fraser Campbell, I could go on and on. Isn't he a former Sunderland footballer? With oh, Dragon. Wheelman, they made loads of creative casting signs. There were lines like the tune, hard nose, Cruise, Fat Backs, Torpedoes, and the Drop Top series, and the Realistic series, if that was your jam. Shaker a bit, shall we? I know we're 50 miles above Mexico, but a little Baja expertise won't go astray. I have a dinosaur bus. Baja um, Bone and Shaker off. is a modern take on the classic Bone Shaker design. No, I won't forgive him. as well. You mean apart from the Horizon Festival? Exactly. There was an animated movie in 2003, a TV series called Hot Wheels Accelerators in 2005, and tons of video games going all the way back to an 8-bit version in 1984. Oh, those were the days. Well, it be. And get this. Back in 2014, they hooked up with the University of Southern California to develop pedometry, an educational curriculum to teach kids science and maths. Seriously? 
I know. And there's me, stuck in a university lecture on advanced analytics with no toy cars or anything. So unfair. There we are now. Volkswagen Beach Bomb sold for $72,000 and some collections are estimated to be worth over a million dollars. In the early 2000s, several collector conventions began to spring up around the world where fans could meet up to buy or sell cars, show off their collections or just talk about their hobby. Well, there's the finish. Nice. Now the Baja Bone Shakers ground clearance is pretty good. But, monster truck bone shaker. Amazing, right? <laughs> Climb in and let's do this. This should be fun. I figured we could finish the documentary in style with an epic stunt run in this piece. Don't ask how we got it up here. So, what fun facts have you got on this thing? Can we do epic stunts now and do facts later, please? Woo! <laughs> this is epic! Um. Okay, okay, fine. In 2018, Hot Wheels launched its Hot Wheels Monster Trucks toy line and an exciting live event came a year later. This line has both amazing original designs and monster truck versions of classics like the Bone Shaker and Twin Mill. When it comes to trucks and skill chains, bigger is better.
thanks. Here, have a Mustang. Well, that wraps up the those events. So, um, yeah, uh, no, oh, uh, what's it? 1957 Hot Wheels Nash Metropolitan Custom. Okay. Anyways, um, uh, that wraps up this video. So, we hope yeah, you well. enjoy watching the video as much as I enjoy making it. Like and subscribe to my channel if you are new to my channel. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Until then, bye bye.